Hey up, this is my 2022 Isle of Man TT story. Cheers. <sighs> well, welcome to the Isle of Man TT at long last. It's been um, two years, well, nearly three years since we've raced around here. We missed it in uh, 2020 and 2021 for obvious reasons. But we're finally back. The last couple of weeks have been pretty stressful. Trying to get everything sorted for a big event like this. Um, sponsors, bikes, graphics, uh, parts, brake pads, consumables, tyres, all that stuff is hard enough as it is. And then you throw the Northwest 200 in uh, into the mix as well. And uh, yeah, we've had we've had a bit of stress. We've been under pressure, but we've done it. We've got here, and uh, we're ready to go. As you can see, I'm sat next to the ZX10 and it's beautiful new colour scheme. That's thanks to flyspitfire.com. They've come on board to sponsor the, the Kawasaki and the Superbike, the Superstock and the Senior Races this year. Not a lot of people know this about me, but I'm um, I'm actually almost as passionate about aeroplanes as I am motorcycles. So it's uh, it's for me, this, this partnership is pretty special. And something else that not a lot of people know about me is the fact that my uh, my great granddad actually flew Spitfires in the uh, in the Second World War. So there you go. You'll have seen by now the Surf Bar Triumph. That's also looking pretty sexy. We went for a, a, a Hawaiian brine themed get up on the Triumph. That's that's partly because the Hawaiian brine design looks pretty banging, but also because. Surf bar is a, is a bar in Hull, and they're a, they've got they're a Hawaiian themed bar, so we thought it would be perfect. I was chatting to some guys earlier on, and uh, and they said, you know, what what would you be happy with lap time wise um, from this TT? And it's not something that I've really put a lot of thought into uh, this time round, but I think after two years off, if I can match my fastest lap from 2019, which was 126 miles an hour average speed, if I can match that. I'll be uh, I'll be fairly happy because the bike's the same. I'm the same, apart from the fact that we've had a couple of years off. Uh, so yeah, if I can match that, I'll go a touch faster. I'll be happy with that. Position-wise, that's a difficult one really because I think where you finish in Isle of Man TT for someone like me, it, it it's as much about how other people's race goes as it is mine. You know, I had a good result in 2019. Uh, I want to finish 14th, but part of that was because. I got to the end of the race when a lot of people didn't because it's, you know, six laps around here is hard work physically, mentally and, you know, for the bikes. Because this place does things to race bikes that nowhere else in the world does. It just batters them to bits. The engines are on the rev limiter for like a mile at a time. There's bumps, there's potholes, you know, it, it, it really is hard on the bikes so, and hard on the riders. So just to get to the end of a, a, a lap, Never mind a six lap senior or superbike race around here is a, is a bit of an achievement. So if I finish all the races, I'll be happy. If I go as fast as I went in 2019, I'll be happy. And, you know, if we have a good result, that's a massive bonus. But that's not really why I'm here. Ah, that's, that's bollocks. Of course it's why I'm here. I'm here to have a good result. But I don't want to put a, a number on that. I don't want to say, right, I want to be in the top 15. I want to be in the top 10 because you just don't know what's going to happen. Anyway, it all starts tomorrow, so we've got um, probably time for two laps on the big bike, two laps on the little bike, so that'll just be a bit of a shakedown. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there'll be lads at the front that are going um, 130 mile an hour plus on the first night, but I won't be. For me, it'll just be, just get my eye back in, make sure the bikes are all right. We are having slight problems with the Triumph, so... Um, you know, we just want to we just want to make sure everything's all right, and then we'll start to build the speed progressively through the week. Now, for anyone who doesn't know a lot about the TT, there'll be three races for the thousand cc bikes. That's a super bike race, a super stock race, and a senior race. The senior race and the super bike race are for super bikes, whereas the stock race is for super stock bikes. But if you've only got a super stock bike like we've got, you can use it in the super bike and the senior race. Then there's two super sport races, which we'll ride the Triumph in. There's also some sidecar races. We don't have a sidecar. Uh, and a uh, super twin race, and we don't have a super twin. So I'll be doing five races, um, all being well. Finishing five races, all being well. So practice starts tomorrow. 
Uh, one of the new rules they've brought in is um, a, a zero tolerance policy to alcohol. So and they'll be they'll be uh, they'll be breathalysing people, and the limit is zero milligrams or parts per million or whatever the whatever the units is. So a couple of burgers for tea tonight. No beers, but um, probably had enough beer in the Northwest 200, so that's no big ish. This is where we've got to come to um, to sign on, so there's a lot of forms to fill in. And uh, I was going to ask them where the briefings are taking place, but that, uh, yeah, that answers my question. So, yeah, there's like a few different people that we've got to go and see and show them our licenses, and you have to have like, um, uh, you have to have a race license, but then you also have to have a, um, a mountain course license, which which you have to jump through a few hoops to get that. You have to do so many races and blah, 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 blah. But um, yeah, basically you just need to tell these guys who you've got with you, who your next of kin is. Um, sign on a few dotted lines and uh, yeah, that's you ready to go. And then later on, there's a briefing. There's all separate briefings for like newcomers, for new mechanics, um, new solo riders, um, more experienced solo riders. So, And then, then they open the bar. I'm just joking, they don't really. Oh well, they do for some people, the VIPs, but I don't think I'm important enough. So this is actually the um, the, the VIP um, hospitality area, so if, you, if you're really important or you're putting loads of money into the event, then you get invited to this place, so, uh, so now you know. <laughs> One thing that didn't happen at the Northwest 200 was George and others didn't get an introduction. So let me introduce them now. The fella facing us with his glasses on his head is George. Believe it or not, that's my father. That's Mr. Booth. Um, he's he's head mechanic, and the fella with his back to us is others. He's also got his glasses on his head. Others um, and George. They're the uh, they're the chaps in charge of looking after both bikes while we're here, the Triumph and the ZX-10. Now, there is a slight issue with the Triumph as we speak. I think there's a perhaps something wrong with either the battery, the fuel pump, or the relay that operates the fuel pump. Every now and then the Triumph won't start, so um, we're trying to get to the bottom of it. We think we might have narrowed down what the problem might be, but um, yeah, we're not there yet, so watch this space. What we probably should have done before we got here was um, go testing somewhere on the Triumph, but unfortunately, with um, all the other time constraints, we just didn't get round to it, so um, perhaps whilst we're here, we might try and get the bike down to Jerby and uh, do some laps on there and See if we can get to the bottom of whatever's causing us our woes. The issue is, well, one of the issue is one of the issues is the fact that it's only um, an intermittent problem, so it's it's only happening sometimes, which makes it really difficult to pinpoint. We could go up there and it'd be fine and it'd run and start and not be a problem, but then at the same time, we could go up there for the start of the super sport race and uh, press the button and nothing happens. So, well, it's. Uh... It's the first day of practice and there's a little bit of blue sky over there, but unfortunately, if you uh, if you follow me this way, way up there, it's a little bit black over there and we have had, we have had spots of rain. So unfortunately, I mean, if it does rain, they'll just, they'll just can tonight's session. So um, we'll, uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed because I really could do with some, some laps, but uh, the ZX-10 is ready to go, Triumph we're still working on. Well, the sun's out, shining in all its glory, oh shit. Tensor power, tensor power. So just, we, we, we're nearly there, we just need another five minutes. Um, new session start time is 1.15, so we're going to be doing a lap of 150, 1.15. Thank you, control out. There you go, new start time is uh, 1.50. Both the bikes are ready, we've got uh, We've got them on warmers, so this is the first session of the 2022 TT. Uh, it's a practice session, well, it's a qualifying slash practice session, so for the first probably maybe four laps, probably only three laps, we'll go on a big bike. Uh, and then 
we'll take the we'll take the triumph out. Now we have had some slight problems with the triumph. Um, I think we might have got to the bottom of it now, but uh, <laughs> but we then again we might not have. So it'll just be a bit of a look at the draw. Really, it might start, it might not. If it doesn't, we'll just have to do some more investigatory work. But fingers crossed, we'll have a good night. I think the uh, I think the weather's the weather is here to stay now, so that's a good thing. Um, Ready to go. Cannot wait. The newcomers uh, get get to go home first, so all these boys are here for the first time. That's ready to race, bro. Bronson, Pike Peak winner, absolute legend. Australian bloke, all the way from the US of A. Yeah, yeah, he is Australian, but he lives in America. What a noisy bugger! So these lads have to um, they have to follow. Uh, a more experienced ride around for the first lap so uh, that sort of serves two purposes really just kind of keeps them in check a little bit and stops them going helpful but it also just just kind of helps with the nerves a little bit helps to show them roughly roughly the lines that they've got to take um, leading the newcomers out is probably milky quail the last manx bloke to win a tt i think <sighs> well can you hear me? Test, pop, pop. Well, that was a baptism of fire. That's the first night of practice at the 2022 TT. Done. Um, I thought I was only going to get uh, a couple of laps on each bike, but managed to do four on the big bike and uh, two on the little bike. So, a good night, a good productive night. Obviously, we can only do two laps at a time on the uh, on either of the bikes because that's as much fuel as as much fuel we can get in. The big bike's got a 24 litre fuel tank. This one holds 20 litres now, or just shy of 20 litres. So both of them we can just manage two laps. So um, the two laps on the big bike came in, filled it up with fuel, and it looked like there was time to do another couple more. So I went straight back out, another couple of laps. Want kicking the ass out of it tonight. Um, didn't want to go nuts on the first night because obviously none of us have been here for uh, almost three years now. So steady away, just just get my head back into gear. It helped massively doing the Northwest 200 the a uh, couple of weeks ago because because I just feel like my brain's in that kind of um, 150 mile an hour plus mode. But it's you know it's still different and um, you know them keeping keeping a big bike flat out pinned in top gear down them long straights it takes a bit of doing so tonight's lap speeds were uh, 119 miles an hour on the uh, on the zx10 and 116 miles an hour on the 600 which i thought was a little bit strange really it seems odd that i've only gone a couple of miles an hour faster on the big bike but then when i sp when i think about it i suppose you know the i did I rode the 600 second so you know it was my fifth and sixth laps by the time I rode that so I was kind of you know a little bit up to speed anyway after riding the big bike so um, I'm happy enough with that I think standing wise that's put me something like 25th on the big bike and 22nd on the 600 which that's good enough for me for the first night like I, I know there'll be people out there that was prepared to sort of hang the bag out a little bit and at this moment in time I'm that's that's not what I'm going to do. I'm, you know, I'm here to enjoy riding the bike and build my pace slowly over the week. So uh, we're we're hoping at the minute, or we've been told at the minute that the uh, that the weather's going to stay reasonably good. So fingers crossed, we'll have a few more days of uh, of practice like this. As promised, I took all those lovely people that donated forty four pounds to put the name on the helmet uh, along for the ride with me. So there's a. Uh, there's quite a few names on here. We did, we did just literally fill it up. Um, sorry, it might be a bit, bit noisy. Uh, someone's letting the air out of the tyres. We did just about fill the helmet up, so there aren't many. There aren't. Well, there isn't really any space left on here. So, if your name's on here, thank you so much for getting involved because, you know, we, we wouldn't have been able to do it without you. The, 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 the budget that that's brought to the team has, has you know, it's meant we can afford to put tyres on the bike it's meant that we can afford to put fuel in the bike we did some sums last night and we've worked out that um, every lap around this place the TT course costs just in tyres and fuel alone 97 pounds 
just in tyres and fuel, £97. That's before you've put diesel in the truck to get here, that's before you've built the bikes and, and put brake pads in them and, and a new chain and all that stuff. 97 quid, so best part of 100 quid. We've done 600 quid tonight, um, but it was definitely worth it. So th again, thank you so much to everyone that's got involved. Well, it's the, uh, the morning after the night before. George and others are doing a little bit of uh, electricery today. Um, unfortunately, we just we was just about to put the seat unit back on the Triumph, and we noticed this horrible, nasty bit of cable. That was um, that was the power feed to the rear light. You have to run a, a red light on the back of these bikes, like a safety thing, and yeah, it burnt out. I think it's I think it's rubbed on something, cut through, shorted, and burnt out. So we've we found a little bit of cable in the van which was actually, um, had a plug on the end of it. It was, it was a, I don't know what it was, it was maybe a lead for, the, for a kettle or something like that, so we just cut the plug off, stripped the cable, and we're using that to rewire the um, rear light. So hopefully, by tonight, we'll have a light that works. Second day of, uh, second day of practice week. It's Monday today, and we've got hopefully another four laps on the big bike, there she is. Now we had a little bit of uh, we had a little bit of na uh, a nightmare in scrutineering because the numbers that we had on yesterday weren't big enough, so it was like a, a bit of a mad rush to put some bigger ones on. Luckily, I had some 31s uh, kicking about in the truck, so we threw them on. It does look a little bit ropey, but uh, yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a mad rush. So after the session, we'll get that tidied up a little bit. Um, 600 went through swimmingly. I'm not entirely sure whether I'll get out on this one tonight because I want to concentrate on the big bike. But uh, you know, if there's if there's any issues with the big bike, it's always good to have the 600 sat there. And um, yeah, it, it means means if there's any issues, it, I, I don't lose the the night's nice practice. I can get out on the little bike. So uh, yeah, ready to go. Ready for some more laps. Night two of practice done. Uh, managed three laps tonight on the on the big bike. The plan was to try and get four, but unfortunately, um, just as I was coming around to finish my third lap, the the red flags came out. There's been an incident somewhere on the track. Uh, hopefully, it's not too big of a deal. Um, fingers crossed, whoever's uh, involved in that's all right. But f fairly happy with how it all went. I, I'm for each lap, I'm feeling a bit more comfortable. Just been able to sort of let go of the brakes a little bit earlier in all the bends and carry a bit more corner speed. So it's slowly coming back. It's slowly kind of uh, making more sense. I feel like if we have a if we have a, a, a week full of riding, then by the time we get to race week, I'll be in a, a good position. And you'll you, you've probably noticed I've got my hands strapped up now. That's. Uh, that's because last night, the, the six laps that I did last night started tearing my hands up a little bit. It's quite um, holding on to uh, ZX10 at 100 and plenty miles an hour does does start ripping your hands up a little bit. So, yeah, the, the physios that, that are here strapped my hands up, did a, a really good job, actually. Um, so I'll be going back for a little bit more treatment tomorrow. I think setup wise it's probably time we just started stiffening a few bits up there was a a couple of uh, a couple of sections where where the bike sort of bottoms out and I'm using I'm probably using too much of the suspension now so I think a bit more preload a bit more damping on the on the shock will just sort of help help support things so we're gonna we'll, we'll do a little bit of work on that gearing's good though rest of the bike's feeling mint it's really comfortable. I like the I like the way the way we've got the bike set up. I think one of the important things uh, around here is to have a bike that's comfortable and a bike that you can sort of muscle around and and you feel confident with. So that that's what I got with the ZX10. Really, I mean, I'd like a little bit more power, but yeah, you've uh, you can only piss with the dick that you've got. The practice is in the evening, so it starts at uh, twenty past six and runs till about uh, I don't know half seven eight o'clock something like that and then the sidecars get a go the sidecars didn't actually get to go out tonight just because the uh the, the there were some delays and stuff so anyway it's stew and dumplings for tea tonight and i can smell it so i'm gonna get out of this kit give the bikes a bit of a hose down and have some tea see you tomorrow 
I've just had a phone call from uh, the organisers, or the, the medical department actually, and they've said my name's been randomly selected, I don't know how random it was, for a, a drug and alcohol test, so I've got to go to the medical centre now, which I'm not actually sure where it is, and give them a little bit of piss and probably blow into a breathalyzer thing, so that should be fun. Good job I didn't have too many beers last night. Well, I found the, uh, I found the medical centre, that wasn't very difficult to find. They told me it was next to the toilets. There's the toilets. And this van, this truck, this trailer, is the, uh, oh look, first aid, St. John Ambulance. So, let's, uh, oh, you've got to go in this way. Let's, um, let's see what happens. Drug and alcohol test, wish me luck, kids. You'll be pleased to know. Clean bill of health, or clean bill of um, drug abuse, anyway. I passed the test. Which, to be fair, I was expecting because I haven't been using drugs in the last, um, well, ever, actually. Thank you very much. So, back to the truck. Through the tents. We've got a, a very small issue with the, with the ZX-10. Um, because of the fact that the suspension's a little bit soft and I'm quite fat and I'm starting to go a bit faster now, the, um, the belly pan on this side is starting to wear through. Uh, so, yeah, before long, before long we're going to lose that. It hasn't worn through yet, but if I hold that up to the light, you can kind of see it's very, very thin there. So, I've just been to the shops, uh, bought a fiberglass repair kit, so we'll get that gobbed up. And, um, hopefully, it'll be good to go again. We've got, uh, hopefully, well, I don't know, actually, I want, we're hoping for four laps tonight. Um, but I've got a feeling they might change the schedule a little bit because uh, the sidecars didn't get any time yesterday. So George is busy, busy cleaning with his day Medna average glasses on. I don't know if you can hear me over the uh, over the sound of the R6 in the dyno machine and and the Dynaman's generator, but I'm I'm here with a big bike. I forgot to bring a stand, so I've got to sit on it while I'm in the queue. But uh, I'm at the front of the queue now. Uh, but yeah, I'm here with the big bike, ready to put it on the dyno, because it's a super stock bike. The rules say it's got to be run on the dyno just to check that it's um, legal, basically, that we're not doing anything we shouldn't be doing. Uh, but whilst I'm here, I am going to have a little word with him and see if he can, see if he can give me some more power, because I think we think he's maybe running a little bit rich, and yeah, it's, yeah there's, there's other bikes that are faster, so if there's anything that he can do to make it faster, that would be mar marvellous, so that's it boys and girls, she's on the dyno, let's hope we can find some more power, fingers crossed. We're back from the dyno and it was a little bit sluggish on the dyno machine, it made 189 brake horsepower which isn't as much as we'd liked but I think part of that's because it's in a red hot dyno room so um, I'm not going to worry too much about that just now. We did say it's running fairly rich over 10,000 RPM and he hasn't got the right software to, to adjust the fuel in on this bike because it's an older bike, but we have. So we're going to go take it. To, he couldn't do it today because he was running out of time but, and there was a big queue. So we're going to take him the bike again tomorrow and with our laptop, which has got the software on it. And hopefully he can just uh, lean it off a little bit at the top to give us a little bit more power and... Um, help us save a little bit of fuel because we are struggling a little bit in the old fuel consumption department so we'll ride it as it is tonight um, and then have a go at it tomorrow whilst I was up at the dyno George has been beavering away with the fiberglass kit on the belly pan it's, uh, I'll show you it's rubbed right through there at the bottom braille and probably bigarrow so yeah we've gobbed it up with some fiberglass on the inside, and uh, now I'm gonna get the vinyl out, which is over there in the dingy dark, and tidy this up. Maybe put a fresh Langan technology sticker on. That's uh, day four done, I think now. There's the big bike behind me, and the little bike there. Both of them have had two laps tonight. Um, it was a bit of a frustrating one, to be honest, because uh, I just got tangled up with a little bit of traffic on the big bike, so, um, 
didn't go as fast as what I would have. Oh, sorry, it's gone a bit dark, hasn't it? Yeah, I didn't go as fast as what I would have liked to have gone. Um, my, my aim is to just try and improve little bits at a time, mile an hour or two every night. Uh, but I didn't manage that. I think I only kind of matched what I did yesterday, really. So, um, but that's all right. I I'm, I'm, I'm feeling better on the bike. We made some changes to the suspension, made it a little bit stiffer, and it was definitely better. So we we might even do uh, a bit more of the same. So. Uh, yeah, that's it for another night. A few more laps tomorrow night. Weather's looking good, so uh, yeah, happy days. Well, we've got the ZX10 in the uh, in the Dynajet truck again. Hopefully, today he can squeeze a little bit more power out of it. It was running a little bit rich. While we're waiting for the Dynaman to hopefully massage a little bit more power into the ZX10, I thought I'd just just explain to you how it all works up at this end. So, so we're in the uh, assembly area, I think you would call it, kind of Park Ferme bit here. Um, and this this is the area that you assemble before either a, a race or a practice session. So what happens is you, you go up up that, that ramp up there into that building, that's the scrutineering bay. So you go in there, the scrutineers check your bike, make sure, make sure it's safe, make sure you're not cheating, make sure your numbers are the regulation size, all that bollocks. And then you come through here. Some of the lads have got their own pit garage. Uh, like there, there's uh, Ian Hutchinson's pit garage, John McGuinness. But most of the field just have to kind of find a space in these areas. There's power there so that you can uh, plug your tire warmers in. So after scrutineering, the bikes all get parked up in here. They might be here for an hour or two, and then you get called up onto the start finish straight. So you go up that ramp over there where that gate is just there, and line up on the on Glen Country Road, which is where the start finish is. Obviously, still open to traffic at the minute. You can see them vans and a bunch of bikes having a ride around. So yeah, that's what happens before a race. And then there's a big archway over there. You kind of roll up to the archway, you get a tap on the shoulder and off you go, flat out. And it sounds a little bit like our ZX-10 might be almost cured. It was a little bit, it was a little bit fluffy at the top end earlier on, so... Um, and it, yeah, it sounds better now. I don't know if you can hear that, but it sounds great. Any minute, that door's going to open. And hopefully it'll wheel us a really fast ZX10 out the back. Hundred and ninety-four. Yeah. Oh well, that's all right. That's better than it was yesterday. Better than it was yesterday. What have you done? Uh, so when we ran it yesterday, we found, uh, like you suspected, it was running pretty rich. Yeah. So um, especially at the top end. Uh, so basically, completely remapped it. Um, you know, it wasn't just the top end uh, where it was running rich, there were areas where it was lean, it just basically, the, the, the fueling wasn't right. Sweet. So we've completely refueled it. Um, and in doing so, yeah, well, where you, like I say, where it was rich is where you're gonna spend a lot of time at your bigger throttle openings. Yeah. Um, using too much fuel doesn't help around here either. Yeah. So you're gonna use less fuel and get more, more performance. So nice. yeah, we've, Good. We've, we've picked up the power quite a bit there. Good already. job. Yeah. The, uh, the line looks nice and smooth anyway. Ace. Fuck off. Slightly shorter session tonight because the way up there, the sidecars are going out first and then they're going out again at the end. But luckily we have managed to, or I say we, the dino man has managed to find a little bit more power in the big bike, so that should be good. Um, another five very coarse power, so we'll see how we get on with that. Have had a little bit of bad news today. Um, I woke up this morning feel a little, feeling a little bit rough and with a really sore throat. Since then, I've been diagnosed with tonsillitis, so they've given me some, um, oh, what's that, what's that stuff they give you? What have they given me? Penicillin. Penicillin, yeah. Give me some penicillin um, and some throat spray to stop it being so sore. So hopefully, um, that'll clear it up. I've also had a few um, uh, paracetamol and ibuprofen just to take the pain away a little bit, so hopefully I'll be all right. I'm feeling good at the minute. Um, throat's a little bit sore, but not too bad. So yeah, we've got about an hour before the session or the sidecar session starts. So any minute now we'll have to take the bikes up for scrutineering. Um, then I'll come get ready 
and hopefully do some decent laps. Well, it's a late one tonight. I've just got back. It's about half nine. Uh, I got stranded out at uh, Glen Tramon. Concrete is over the real bumpy bit before Ramsey uh, because it was red flag. I'm not sure what's happened, so uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll find out in the fullness of time. Hope everyone is all right. Uh, there's the bike. There was a lot of flies. You can probably see lots and lots and lots of flies. So I, w I went through I went through two tear offs in the first lap and then fucked myself a little bit really. But uh, yeah, one or. Oh, Two laps on a big bike, half a lap on the little bike, and then we kind of had to wait there for an hour or so, and then we got um, picked up by the travelling marshal, and we followed them back over the mountain, just at kind of a fairly slow pace. So everything's everything's going fairly well so far. So that we we had the big bike on the dyno earlier on, and he and he got us a little bit more power, and it 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 oh, all right. It's not all of a sudden a, a rocket ship, but it just feels a little bit a little bit more. Um, it's got a little bit more pep at that at the at the top end, not so much in top gear because it hasn't got so much power that it can really pull right to the top of top gear. But all through the other gears, um, yeah, it's feeling good. So they're telling. I mean, we've we've had good weather so far, and they're telling us the weather's getting even better. So hopefully, some more laps tomorrow, um, and then by the time we get to race week, we'll be we'll be ready to start going a little bit quicker. I think on the big bike tonight, I did. 122 and a half, so a little bit quick, quicker than yesterday. So, moving in the right, moving in the right direction. So, uh, yes, I am now gonna try and find something for dinner and have some tablets because I've got a really sore throat. See you tomorrow. We've just had the forks out of the big bike. They're back in now. Um, we decided that rather than winding more and more preload onto the forks, we'd have a word with Rico at Maxton and see what he thought so we've uh, we've had a bit of a change of plan we've actually we've actually put some stiffer springs in and uh, reduced the preload a little bit and put some more oil in there uh, we've we've reduced the air gap a little bit just to just to try and support the bike a little bit more on the brakes uh, it's bottoming out bottoming out or it was bottoming out quite hard in a few places so hopefully we've uh, we've cured that so the plan tonight is a couple of laps on this just to test that out, see if it's any better. Maybe go a touch faster and then a uh, couple more laps, possibly on the Triumph. We're going to have a bit of a go at these forks on the Triumph as well. We, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the bike, but I just, we feel like, you know, we've, we haven't really done anything to the suspension, anything to the setup. So we're just going to have a bit of a go and uh, try a few things. So the, the main thing we're going to try tonight is... Uh, lift it, drop the forks through the top a little bit so lift the front end of the bike up just by five mil just to see what see if it makes a difference there's a lot of people running very different setups on these so we thought we'd uh, we thought we'd give it a go while we've got time so that's the plan tonight I'll shush now because there's uh, lots of noise happening over there so I think it's time I went and got some tablets hopefully you can hear me it's a little bit noisy down here um, we're about to start the practice on day, what is this now, day five? I've lost count of the 2022 TT. So the plan tonight is to do two laps on the big bike there and then another two laps on the little bike, which is there. Um, if you're wondering why I look like I've put about three stone on, I've got, uh, yeah, I've got a bit of tonsillitis, so my, my neck's a little bit swollen up. Uh, it wasn't just a pizza from last night, so uh, I've had bunch of tablets feeling all right now so hopefully I'll be strong when we get out there fingers crossed well I've had better evenings uh, first of all let's start with the big bike I, uh, I did two laps on that first lap was all right 122.8 mile an hour I think so that's that's a little bit quicker again uh, and then the, the second lap I just couldn't hold on I was completely exhausted my arms pumped up so that was a bit of a slow one and I came in uh, and I decided just to do one lap on the 600 just to just to see if the front end was any better uh, but we in yeah the, the, when we put the bike back together after doing the front end the um, we've we've not we've not gone quite tight enough with the with the clip-ons and the left one was just shifting around a little bit so uh, I had to stop a couple of times just to straighten it back up um, 
so yeah, it wasn't a very fast lap. Uh, just brought it back. We'll tighten that up and have another go tomorrow. But to be honest with you, I'm exhausted. It was never going to be a big night of laps anyway tonight. So um, we'll have another go tomorrow. Hopefully by then the penicillin, penicillin will have kicked in. And um, yeah, I'll be feeling a bit fitter. See you tomorrow.